starting lineups. First for the visiting team, Eastern Express. Batting first, number 27, Dylan Smith. <laughs> Batting second, number 24, Max Keogh. <laughs> Batting third and playing third base, number 29, Brennan Doyle. <laughs> Batting Batting fourth and playing first base, number 16, Gavin Thompson. Batting fifth, number seven, Nate McKenzie. Batting sixth and playing shortstop, Nate McLean. Batting seventh and playing second base, number 19, Xavier Power. Batting eighth and pitching, number 14, Emmett Clinton. Batting ninth and playing right field, number 11, Jevin Label. Aren't they going to switch positions, and though? And catching, number 44, Jackson Gardner. Batting 11th and playing left field, number 42, Grady Jeffrey. And batting 12th and playing center field, Jace Myers. The head coach is Desi Doyle, and assistant coaches are Jay Label, A. Smith, and T. McKenzie. <laughs> now for the St. John's Cats. Batting first and playing second base, number 37, Owen Hiscock. Batting second and catching, number 16, Damian Norris. Batting third and playing third base, number 27, Will Breen. Batting fourth and playing center field, number 18, Henry Parsons. Batting fifth and playing right field, number 35, Sam Murray. Batting sixth and playing first base, number 36, Luke Hudson. Batting seventh, number 31, Lily Beersford. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, number 29, Nash Gorman. Batting ninth and playing left field, number 30, Kalem Gale. Batting 10th, number 26, Cameron Glasgow. Batting 11th and pitching, number 34, Owen Williams. The coach is Seamus Breen, assistant coach is Barry Hudson, Brendan Green, Brendan Gale. Well, there you have the starting lineups, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and welcome to the beautiful Lapierre Field here in Hammonds Plains, Nova Scotia. My name is Michael Petter and you are joining us here on 360 Live for day number one of the U11 Baseball Atlantic Championships. And in this game, we have the Eastern Express representing Prince Edward Island and the St. John's Capitals representing Newfoundland Labrador. And I am joined in the booth by a couple of very special guests I have on commentary with me today. The man they call Otani, uh, Chase Leslie. Chase, welcome to the broadcast booth. Thank you. This is really exciting. This is my first time doing it, and I think it's going to be pretty fun. It is going to be a pretty fun game. And, and you were talking before we started the broadcast that... Uh, You've now played against both of these teams because you played against Eastern Express back in July. You played against the Capitals just earlier this afternoon. So you've seen both of these teams. Tell us a little bit about how each of those games went. Well, I think um, I think Eastern is a really good team, a really good ball club. Obviously, we lost to them. So um, they got a good lineup. Um, the bats are dangerous, and um, you got to be really careful one through um, – like 10 or 12 um, it's really dangerous you know they got some good players and we just faced uh, St. John's so um, St. John's seemed pretty good um, obviously facing them for the first time I thought they were pretty good we beat them but I think that was a really they were they were a really good team you know I think they're I think both teams have a chance of winning this game. So you guys had a very good game against uh, St. John's, winning 13 to three, and the big bats, two big bats, getting home runs. First, it was the grand slam from Nash Haverstock, and then the solo shot from Tyler White, um, and then the game-winning run comes in when you're standing at the on-deck circle. 
And I saw a little bit of disappointment, I think, in your eyes yeah. when you didn't get a chance for one more swing of the bat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was um, – I wanted to hit, but, hey, we got the win, so um, it was good. <laughs> it's fun. And uh, Keegan in the booth with us as well here. So, uh, uh, Keegan, thanks so much for uh, coming up here with us as well. Yeah, I'm just checking to make sure that uh, Chase Otani Leslie does a good job here for us today, representing Hammonds Plains well. Oh, I'm sure he's going to do great. And so we're going to get things going here with Dylan Smith up at the bat, and he's going to face the pitcher Owen Williams. The lefty steps in, and we are underway here at Lapierre Field as the first pitch misses just a little bit high and outside. Smith. A uh, slightly smaller stature player, so he's going to have a smaller strike zone for Williams to be attacking. Good cut there. Fouls one off. The count goes to one and one. You didn't get a chance to see Williams pitch in the first game, obviously, but seeing him throw his first couple of pitches here, quick uh, first impressions on uh, Owen Williams on the mound. Yeah, um, I think he's use. I think he's pitching really well. I think he's uh, he looks pretty comfortable out there. I don't think. It doesn't look like um, he's showing any nerve, but um, it looks like he's having a lot of fun out there, I can tell. Right on. And uh, if uh, Buck Martinez and Pat Tabler are watching, guys, uh, look out for your jobs here. I think we got uh, the replacement sitting right here in the booth next to me. And uh, I was looking at your bio. You're a big Jays fan as well, obviously. Yeah. And a big fan of Vladdy and what he's doing this season. He's yeah, having a heck of a year. Yeah, he's being, he's really dangerous. I mean, I don't think anyone on this plant wants to face him, especially, um, especially when it's in a, in a, in a, in a real game. So I think, I think he does, he's doing really well with 45 home runs and Shohei Tani's trying to bounce up there. So, um. Lottie's just got to hold his ground, and, and we'll see what happens at the end of the season and what the playoffs do. So um, it's going to be exciting to do. It's going to be exciting to uh, uh, watch. Speaking of Otani, I hear that's your nickname. How did you get the nickname Otani? Well, I just thought since I pitch and bat, I just thought that'd be a good combination for a, for a nickname. So, so there's a there ground ball, the first, the first there, baseman. There you go. He even got the play-by-play. -play. Right on. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here and let you ride. You you got this one. <laughs> Good job there. So coming up next, go for it. You take over. Here's Max Keel. And if you can't read my writing, that's perfectly okay. I know my writing is a little tough to read sometimes. But Max Keel steps in. I think these two teams was, are probably the two teams and. I think Eastern and Dartmouth would probably be a good matchup as well, you know, as they beat us this morning. So, um, and to see Eastern play, I think that would be a good matchup. It's here's 1 0, locked foul down the left field line. This is great. Two, That's one, two. <laughs> Chase, uh, you definitely, if. If you don't have a future on the field, you've definitely got a future up in the broadcast booth. Yeah. Not saying that you don't have a future on the field, but if. Yeah. If on field doesn't work out, definitely yeah. you got you're off to a great start here. There's a pitch that's just inside. It's inside on him, so he'll take it. It's two and two. Here's the two two. Grounded is this ball will skip foul down the, down the first base side. So we didn't see you do any pitching today. I'm guessing you're planning to be in the rotation then for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we got, um, there's there's a ball upstairs. Um, we got a, um, next game, we got uh, the new guy who we just brought up who hit a home run in the, fr in the first game who's starting. So we faced against him when he was playing with the Blue Jays. Um, and that was and, and he didn't he went five five innings and i think he to see him pitch with an ace jersey on i think that's really special especially for us is there's a ball four to the number two hitter yeah so max keel gets on with a walk so here i'll 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 fill that in for you while we're going there's there. brian boyle 
Brennan Doyle steps in. Here's the first pitch to him. It takes the ball upstairs. It's 1-0. As uh, as we see a lot of people checking this one out, the great game going on right now as well. The uh, over on the other diamond at Eisenhower Field, last we heard, and we're not getting live there's, updates on. There's, there's uh, a ball to the shortstop, second for one, and they won't. They'll only get the the run at, at second, so the one out. So here's Gavin Thompson. And men Jeez. mentioning that other game, it's Dartmouth and uh, the team from New Brunswick, the Kennebecasis Valley team. They are tied in extra innings, last we heard. Now, that last report was probably about 20 minutes ago, and uh, we're not able to get live to the minute updates, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a ground ball to the second baseman who misses it, and it'll be an error on him, so there will be runner at first and second with one out. Two. Two outs. And that brings up Nate McKenzie. McKenzie from Montague. Part of that Eastern Express team. It's the first pitch to him. About a pass ball that'll get by the catcher. And, and it's 1-0. and It's a runner at second and third now with two outs. Here we go, Williams gets set, ready for the 1-0 pitch. Takes the ball upstairs. Runner second and third, two away here, top of the first inning. This is a ground ball, a hot shot. It'll, and this will get to left field, runner rounding. Here's the throw to the plate, he's not gonna be in time as There'll be two outs with a runner at second now. So two runs come in to score and the RBI double by by Thompson Galvin. So here's Nate McKenzie. Oh, actually it was McKenzie who got that two RBI. Oh, sorry, my bad. No, no worries. So get that filled in there. There's two runs in and now Nate or, Nate McLean up to bat. Step in as he rips one, a hot shot to the shortstop. Bobbled and it'll be another error, so that's two errors. One on the shortstop and one on the second baseman. So they got, so now there's a runner at first and third, so they're gonna be, with two outs, so. That brings up Xavier Power. Swing and a miss, and there's a power swing as he knocks a foul. Zone one. Power, another Blue Jays fan, just like you. Says his favorite player is Marcus Simeon. He's having a pretty good year as well. Is he ever? He's, he's playing good. He's playing pretty good as a second baseman. Is there's, there's a ball that's upstairs. To watch this team, it's pretty fun. Um, the Caps need one more out, and they're out of the, and then they're they're out of the tough jam. But I think the pitcher's throwing strikes. Is there a strike? As he looks at one going down swing, and it uh, won't be one, two, three. As the as Eastern scores two runs, so it's two nothing Eastern. Two errors. That'll bring the Caps up to bat in the bottom of the first and do up in the bottom of the first. It'll be Owen Hiscock, Damian Norris, and Will Breen. And if anybody gets on, then Henry Parsons will follow up after that. A good start for the Eastern Express, certainly with two runs in the top of the first, but we saw it in this last game. Runs in the top of the first, they get you off to a good start, but you gotta be able to maintain it through all six innings. And that was the one thing you guys were able to do to, to the Capitals is shut them down after they had a hot first last game. Yeah, you said it. And um, I think that their lineup, like they, that's just one of the teams they have to get used to that they might get dangerous at first. But then they'll start to lay down, um, start to lay, lay back and relax. So I think, and if you just put more bats on balls, 
then it'll definitely um, you can definitely score a lot of runs. And this is a this is a pretty good uh, Caps team. Obviously, we faced them uh, last time, so it's they got a they got pretty good hitting. As we see the warm-ups for the Eastern Express, and out there on the mound is Emmett Flynn getting himself warmed up, the right-hander. Owen, Owen Hescock will stack, step in. It's the first pitch. There's a hot shot to right to the shortstop, and it'll be, in the, and he's out. Oh, boy, that was a close call. It's tough from here, but th that was a very close call. That's another thing. They have fast legs. You know. Nice play at short by Nate McLean there to gather that one up and get that first out of the inning. That brings up Damian Norris. Norris had a pretty good game at the plate in the last one. He also had a good game behind the plate for the Caps. First pitch swinging, and that one gets through to the outfield for a single which will bring up Will Breen with one on and one out here in the bottom of the first. These guys can hit, you know. In the outfield, we're playing a three depth on them and they definitely show why they want to be the best team, you know. Um, they uh, they won Provincials for, there's, he lays down a bun and that's a good one and he runs it out threw it away is there's a ball that is knocked down and he's rounding second heading for third he'll be in there safely standing up as he's as he'll go back to third with a rbi triple so that's going to make the score two to one or yeah two to one So the Capitals with a quick response to the two runs in the top of the first with one of their own in the bottom. And Henry Parsons now up to the plate with a runner on third and one out. There is a one to second base. Gets it on to first and oh. And he is out. Called by the umpire. She thought he was out. And I, I, obviously I can't see from out here, but that, but that was a close Murray. call. Here's Sam Murray. Number 35 for the Caps. So an R in. RBI ground out there for Parsons as he takes a ball, ball down low. It's one and zero. Drives Breen in from home. Now Murray up to bat swings oh, at that one. Pitch. I've noticed this from a couple pitchers so far that they tend to they tend to stand like a little bit behind the one and then they just start their wind up really fast and they and they and they're throwing hard but they're kind of like jerking it so I'm not sure but I think I think we faced one of these pitchers from Dartmouth here's the pitch high upstairs see Murray lays it off 2-2 two -two now the count here on Swing Murray is he fouls one back to the backstop Still two and two as he's bottling back, and he is at. I'm not sure how much pitches he, he's at, but. Two, two pitch. Swing and a miss. A swing. He rips one into right field. He had to put his bat up pretty high for that. That'll bring up Luke Hudson, the first baseman. Number 36, Luke Hudson. Here in our tie ball game, 2-2, two, two, bottom of the first inning. There's a strike on the outside corner. He doesn't think it's a strike, but it's a, it is a strike, so it's 0-1 on the first baseman. 0-1. Swing. As he misses it, it's quickly 0-2. This pitcher has a pretty fast windup. I've noticed that as he just kind of gets really fast once the batter's ready. Here's the, here's the 0 2. It goes way better the backstop. Runner's going. Runner will move up on the pitch. So they have a runner at second. 
We're gonna attack for the for the first for the first baseman. Here it is. There's, there's a ball that is outside, so it is three and two on the on the Capitals' first baseman. Here's the pitch. Swing as he fouls it off to stay alive. Still three and two. Just getting a piece of that one there. Yep. Good battle here between Hudson and Flynn. Here, here's the pitch. It's fouled off the catcher's glove as Ronald Murray will move up to third. So there's a runner at third. So the pitcher will be after they. He throws the pitch, he'll be running into, the, there's the pitch, a little dribbler as he goes to first and there's a, as he is called out, as the coach doesn't like it. So he had a few words with the umpire. But that's the end of the first, first that's the end of the second inning. So after one complete, <laughs> One one inning done, sorry. My bad. No worries. No worries. And after one complete, we're tied up at two runs apiece between the Eastern Express and the St. John's Capitals. Two runs, two hits, one error back in that first inning there for the Capitals. So we're all even up at two apiece heading into the top of the second. It'll be Emmett Flynn, Jevin Laybolt, and Jackson Gardner do up for the Express, and if anybody gets on, then it'll be uh, Jeff, uh, uh, b -b 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 uh, Jeffrey, or Grady Jeffrey. I can't even read my own writing, let alone ask somebody else to read it. There we go. As the sun I think the funnest comes part back about out again. Yep. I think the funnest part about this um, tournament is that um, no matter if you win or lose, you still have fun. You know these pe these teams are obviously coming out from uh, Eastern's coming out from PEI, and uh, the Capitals are coming from the capital city of uh, St. John's. So I think it's like especially going to hotels and stuff like that. I think uh, obviously we didn't make it to the final in provincials, but I mean. And when we were in PEI for that tournament, we didn't make it, but the boys still had a lot of fun. And some of the older siblings were having fun with us too. So no matter if you go to, like if you go to a hotel, no matter if you win or lose, you, you have a lot of fun. Right on. That's what it's all about at this level, certainly, is That's going right. out having a good time. And glad to see that that is what you guys are experiencing and chase i'm having a blast having you up here with me for this game for sure <laughs> thanks as we see the capitals pitcher hudson still getting ready there for his second inning of work luke hudson from pouch cove newfoundland labrador I think this the funnest part about Atlantic is you get to, um, is in only in provincials you get to like we would just be representing Hammond's Plains, but now I think for the Capitals it's representing uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland Labrador, and for Eastern it's representing PEI, and obviously for us it's Nova Scotia, but so you got a got a province you represent, so. Um, I think that's really fun. For sure, and of course, being the host team, there is one other Nova Scotia team here because... Dartmouth, yep. Yeah, and that game between you two this morning was... Oh, was that there's one? There's one that plunks the hitters. He's frustrated going down to first base, but now they got a runner at first. Yeah, he's... Uh, that hit him pretty flush up high, and... Yeah. So he'll take a moment to. As a pitcher, you just got to shake that off and just pretend it never happened. So now you just focus on the next batter as the catcher's going out to Hudson, just having a little conversation. 
And that next batter will be Jevin Leibolt. And if I'm mispronouncing that, I do apologize. I'm looking at the wrong list, that's why. As I double you must be looking at Team Eastern. Yeah, there we go. Jevin Leibolt from Stratford. Quite a few of these yeah. players actually from Stratford. Yeah. Is he swing and a miss? That's 0 and 1. Some of them from a few smaller communities around the area, but. Yep. Leibolt from Stratford. Oh, is there, he swings at a high heater. Upstairs, it's 0 and 2. Leibolt, a two sport athlete, and not only a two sport athlete, but won the provincial titles in both hockey and baseball this year. Wow. So. For hockey and baseball. And I, when I watch this team, you can usually tell by watching, just watching them, um, that they're a provincial championship team. As I, I was watching, I'm watching this, and there's zone two on. Labeled. Label. There we go. Fouls one back. Fouls one back. It's still zone two. Um. I think a lot of people th think it's just the parents that are having nerves about this, but as he sw gets caught looking at a high, at a fastball, it's low in the zone. Um, and it, the, it's not just the parents that get nervous, but also the players sometimes, mm -hmm. they can get nervous as well. Um, I know I was nervous in provincial championship after I went out after uh, three or four innings, and I was... Um, really nervous, but when I got out, I trusted the boys, and they did their job. So Leibolt strikes out there. That's the second strikeout for Hudson on the mound. And Jackson Gardner comes up with one on, one out here in the top of inning number two. I always think that if there's a runner at first and one out, as he swings at a fa low fastball, um... I would all, in my video game, I would always get them to bunt, so <laughs> to take them out of the double play situation. I think he's just looking for his pitch to drive here to hopefully score that run in. Is the pitch swing and a miss? Is the the pitcher goes down on one knee? Hudson goes on one knee. Is bit of a uh, one and two, I think the count right now. One and two. So Express two, Capitals two. If you just joined us, we're in the top of the top of the second inning. Swing and a miss, and now they have two out, and that's the third K for Hudson after he gets back-to-back -back <coughs> strikeouts after uh, hitting Emmett Flynn. That brings up Grady Jeffrey for his first plate appearance of the game. Some pitchers are good on under high pressure. Some pitchers aren't, but. I can definitely tell this pitcher doesn't care if there's runner at first, second, or third. So, looks, there you go. It's a little chilly here at Lapierre. Bit of a breeze. As not, oh, he wants a different baseball. There we go. One of the things that uh, we were talking about during that first game, especially when we had all that cloud cover, there were a couple of pop-ups that looked like they were a little difficult to handle because of the amount of cloud cover that you had. W was that the case or, w or was it okay? I mean, I, for me, I didn't really get a pop-up. Like I got a, a little, two, a couple of dribblers, but like a little flares, but I, I don't think this should really bother anybody. And if they do hit it up, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. I think you would rather play in this kind of weather than playing in at 40 degrees. Um, I can definitely say that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, I mean, I'm obviously, I don't... This does seem a little chilly. Hopefully we can see what's happening at the Dartmouth field. Uh, uh, excuse me, Eisenhower. As, he t as number 42 takes a ball upstairs. 
So the count on Grady Jeffrey now, I believe, two and one. As Emmett Flynn had moved up to second base on a pass ball earlier in this at bat. There's yeah. a high pitch as he walks. As he walks 42. Jackie Robinson. That'll bring up Jace Myers. Yeah, one of the most important numbers in baseball. 42, absolutely. Yeah. Chase Myers up to bat for his first plate appearance of the game. That one just catches the bottom of the zone. I, I, I was a little, I'll be honest, I was a little frustrated with the calls that we got, but um, you know, you just gotta shake it off and move to the next pitch. As obviously we played the teams, there is a strike, it's 0-2. We played, um, obviously, we played the cap, the caps, um, and we some of the strikes were a little bit low. Is there's a pass ball that gets by the catcher? Is there's is the both runners will move up in the scoring position? Flynn gets to third. Jeffrey gets to second. The biggest thing that I always hear from players. And I, I will fully admit, I, I never really played at, at a high level like you playing, that you're playing at here, AAA. Um, but the big thing that I always hear from players in any sport, whether it's baseball, hockey, whatever, is they just want the officials to be consistent. If it's a strike to one guy, it should be a strike to everybody. If it's a ball to one guy, it should be a ball to everybody. Now, granted, the strike zone's a little bit different from player to player because it's supposed to go, you know, knee to, to the letters. It's wasting down. Yeah. There's a swing and a miss, strike three, so. That's the end of the inning. Hudson strikes out the side, three Ks in the inning, but he also does hit a batter and walk a batter. Neither of them come around to score. We've played one and a half here at Lapierre Field, and it's Express 2, Capitals 2. Looking ahead to the bottom of the second inning, it's going to be Lily Bearsmere, or Bearsmere, excuse me. Let me double check that because I can't read my own writing again. Bearsford, I was way off. <laughs> Lily Bearsford, Nash Gorman, and Kaylin Gale do up for the uh, the Capitals here in the bottom of inning number two. So coming back to what we were just talking about here a second ago, consistency from umpires. That's really what you, all you guys ask for, right? Yeah, um, we can't ask for much more than that. Obviously, if you strike out looking that not a strike that's like way outside, um, you can usually, like if you um, strike out looking um, at a pitch outside or something, um, obviously... The umpires can't really make excuses, obviously, since they're now at the back of the plate. But um, I think it was tough for them to call from the pitcher's mound. But obviously, with COVID, and I always were like, was like, um, if if they can't see from back there, it's not like they're going to be any closer, any further away from the catcher as they are from the pitcher. So, um, but we're hoping. Hopefully next year it'll be umpires behind the plate and it'll be the same. Is which I find really what I find really funny about this is that it's Nash Gorman and we had Nash on our team last year and we had a guy named Matty Gorman. So there's a ball rip foul on the right side. Um, yeah, um, we had a guy named uh, Matty Gorman. So I think it was it's kind of funny to hear Nash Gorman. He's the old one ripped on the ground to second, takes his time, gets it on the first one down. And that brings up the aforementioned Nash Gorman. He, he kind of has hair like Bo Bichette. <laughs> I'm not. I'm jealous because I just don't have enough hair for any of that kind of style. Period. Hey, neither do I. <laughs> so you're, you're not quite old enough to get the, you know, the big uh, empty spot right at the very top, though, just yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, 
as Nash tries to get a bun that goes behind foul. You always tell, like, if they try to bun on the first pitch, then depending on what the coach wants, then you would kind of expect them to do it again. But I see the third baseman is about two feet in front of the bag. They've definitely adjusted to that showing of bunt on the first pitch. That one misses upstairs, and it goes to two and one. That one misses outside, I guess, and it goes to three and one now here on Gorman. Kalen Gale in the on-deck circle. There's a ball for it. just missed on the corner. So Gorman goes to first base with the walk. Kalen Gale now Number 30, Kalen Gale. with one on one out here. Bottom of the second inning tie ball game. Still waiting to hear an update on that game between Dartmouth and New Brunswick. I'm if interested to see what, that ha what happens because if Dartmouth um, if Dartmouth would have lost to us and they lost the game they're playing now, then they'd be out. But since they beat us, then they have a second chance tomorrow, I think, they play yep. tomorrow. Um, and we play uh, Team New Brunswick tomorrow morning, I think. Yep. Yeah, and then you'll play PEI, so the Express, at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And what's interesting is... If New Brunswick beats Dartmouth, mm -hmm. and if there's a strike, just gets just, in under the tag. Just missed it. The throw was a little high from the catcher, but that was a great throw there. Gale struck out, and Gorman just beats the tag. It was just about a strike him out, throw him out, double play. That brings up. Cameron Glasgow. You never want to, as a team, you never really want to get into those habits of striking out from especially in two strikes. I get if there's two outs, but if there's one out or no outs, don't take your chances. I mean, especially on one out, he tries to bunt and tries to go ahead. Is the one that steals third? He has to get back to the bag as he was about to go home, and no, he gets it and he's standing up. As the run will score, and it is three to two for the Capitals. Big run there for the Caps. <laughs> Big run there for the Caps as he was able to steal third, and then Gorman is on the wild throw to third that got pop, got by. Glasgow strikes out to end the inning, but. A big run for the Capitals to move them ahead 3-2. to two, And we will head to the third with the, the St. John's Capitals leading the Eastern Express. 3-2 after two. We'll head to the third. Do up in the top of the third inning for the Express. We're back up to the top of the order. Dylan Smith, Max Keough, and Brennan Doyle. And if anyone gets on, then it'll be Gavin Thompson. And just to finish what I was starting to, to mention earlier, if New Brunswick beats Dartmouth and if the Capitals beat the Express, then we'll finish the first day with all five teams with records of one and one. And that'll make every game on Saturday, tomorrow, that much more important. So a lot riding on both of these games that are in progress right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I was... Um, obviously we haven't faced every team yet, but, um, from what I've seen from PEI, uh, Newfoundland, um, uh, and stuff, we haven't faced New Brunswick yet, but I can definitely tell, I've noticed from Eastern and, uh, Newfoundland that they're, that the top of the order can really do damage, and I think that's, but, that's, that's something that our team can do as well. You know, we get, like the one, two, three hitters um, can do a lot of damage. So, 
And so we're going to see the top of the order here for the Eastern Express here in this top of the third inning. As Hudson ready for his third inning of work. I was just thinking, I'm not sure. I Since they're the home team, I believe, right? I think it says 20 pitches for Look, the... Looks like, you're right, yes. Looks like exactly 20 pitches, and for the other team, 30-something. I can't yep. see since it's a white pole right there, but I can see that he's uh, in the 30s. So here we have Dylan Smith coming up to the plate. Smith 0 for 1. He grounded out to second to start the game. And here comes the first pitch. A little, hot, a little high on the outside corner there. It is 1 and 0. Oh. Usually a lot of teams, some, some teams like... I've noticed like there is one that's ripped up between the shortstop shortstop and second base. Is that once they get the bats going, it's hard to stop them. And I've noticed that from Dartmouth and and Eastern right now, obviously, is the number two hitter. Um Max Keo. Keo walked and was then uh retired on a force play at second. So Keo batting here, top of the third inning. <coughs> Express down <coughs> by a run right now. <coughs> so as there's a ball ripped, but foul. That's one thing I've, I've noticed from the first couple of games today. Players are able to spray the ball all over the field. It's not just automatically pull. It's not just automatically send it the other way. Players are really good at this level at being able to use the whole field to uh, accomplish what they're trying to do. Yeah, and at this level, you're not really, you're not really focused on hitting it, um, like trying to pull it um, or trying to hit it op oppo. Or straight away. I think you're just trying to get the bat on the ball and keep it fair. As, and obviously, as once you grow older, there's, there's a ball ripped in the left field. There's a left fielder kind of misses and it's off his knee, and there they got a run down. As he gets, he's safe at third base. Boy, that is a very close call. As they have runner as at second and third now with. Nobody out, and that Nobody brings up, up Brennan Doyle. Doyle a, singled and came around to score his first time up. I was saying, like, you're not really trying to hit it on this side of the field, especially, like, in the major leagues. Like, they have, like, their, um, like, different things about, like, the average and stuff, so, and where they usually hit it, so where they can play, like, in the outfield, there's a shift or, um, different places but obviously in this level you don't really have it so is there's a ball a pass ball that the runner will that there's a little hesitation by the leadoff hitter but he scores as the runner from second moves up to third so they got a runner at third and it is now tied up at three runs apiece tied up at three Hudson up to 28 pitches now. It's maybe one thing we should have up here is a pitch counter. <laughs> That'd be just one more thing for me to try to keep track of. <laughs> uh, here comes the pitch. The one uh, thing about hosting this is you don't have to drive very far. This Newfoundland probably has to fly. Newfoundland has to fly. PEI can obviously drive, but Newfoundland has to fly. Yeah. Team from from New Brunswick probably drove over as well. Yep. 
Caps may have come over on the ferry. I don't know. It's a pretty long ferry ride, though, to get from Newfoundland, and then you got to drive. That only gets you into Sydney, and then you got another three what? hours, to, three four hours to go. Yeah. What I like about these two teams is that if if one person strikes out or one th one thing goes wrong, they never give up, and that's one thing our team was able to accomplish today. Is if you're down three nothing, there's no point in just saying, "Okay, you guys, let's forfeit," and you guys win. So there's a ball fouled 50 miles back into the woods. Um, is that you never want to give up, and that's the team. If you're the team that gives up, you're the team that's going to be one of the teams that loses in tournaments like this, or provincials, or nationals even. Mm -hmm. um, or Olympic, or Olympics, but I've noticed like the cheering just keeps on going, so that keeps them up. Yeah, great energy from both teams, certainly, from all the teams that we've seen here so far. There's a call, There's third a strike. strike. Three on the outside, a little bit on the outside corner there. So they got runner at third with... Now one out, and that's the fifth out. strikeout for Hudson on the day. Five Ks on the mound for the capital starting pitcher, and it brings up Gavin Thompson. Thompson had a hit and came around to score. And another laser beam. Laser that's ripped is as the center field tries to cuts it off. He's going to two as he gets in there standing up. So they got a runner at second base with a one out. And another run comes in to score and the Express McKenzie have retaken the lead. We'll step in. So he swings at a high fastball, it's 0-1. McKenzie doubled and drove in a run in the first inning. Ended up being stranded at third. Takes the ball down low. I'm not sure about you, but um, uh, what was I going to say? We all have those moments. It was going to be very profound, but I can't remember what it was. There's a little dribbler that'll get past as they're, run, as they're waving him. Here's the throw, goes straight through, and it's and the catch will make the catches. As Thompson a, comes Thompson around to score. Thompson goes to two but, with, 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 with a, a double. Uh, here's Nate McLean. So Nate McKenzie gets the RBI, driving Gavin Thompson in to score. There's a ball fouled way back behind us, and as I see where the ball lands, as one of the players will get the, there to get the ball back. Yeah, we deserve danger pay, being right where we are here, but... Uh, yeah. Haven't convinced them to give us that yet. Oh, I forgot my glove. <laughs> That's right. I got you up here. You're here to protect me. You'll you'll make the catch. <laughs> one and one the count here on McLean. With McKenzie at second base and the Express now leading by two. Three runs in here in the top of the third so far. Holly did a lot of work to host Atlantic. I mean, look at all the... No, you guys can't see, but they're... We got like no, Nova Scotia flags, uh, obviously the provinces like New Brunswick and Newfoundland and stuff. So this, she set it up and it's looking pretty good. Yeah, Holly Lapierre doing a great job getting everything organized here. I've worked a few tournaments with her now and she always puts on a class A show. That is for sure. Yeah. 
Three and one the count on McLean. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like un obviously from here we can't see it. I'm guessing he just throws two seam and a four seam. I can't see very well from here. Well, we can't see very well from here, but well, pretty good. There's a strike down low. I think that might I think he throws fastballs. I, I don't see any change up or curveballs or anything, so I'm I'm my guess is just he's uh throwing He's throwing fastballs. So when we get to see you pitch, if we get to see you tomorrow, and if not, if we get to see you on Sunday, what can we expect from your pitching arsenal? Um, I just kind of added this is the runner from second. They'll go to third. Um, I kind of have a two seam, a four seam, and my two seam has a lot of movement on it. And I just kind of have a curveball now that I just added in my and I just and we played. Um, we have a new guy named Ty on our team now. Um, he was from the old, he was from the Blue Jays back in, uh, forget where it is. Um, we brought him up and he, he had a home run to left field. Um, uh, and I was pitching in that game and I just, and I just started to use the curveball. So I got a curve, fastball, and a fastball. Awesome. Right on. So, a three-pitch pitcher. Uh, my, t my, the pitch that I you'll probably see me use the most is my two seam. But I like using I like, um, using the curveball a lot. Um, you know I like both catchers, uh, Cameron Bailey and Nate Moulton. So I think I don't really care who catches. So I just care that I get to go on the mound and throw strikes. As that one misses high as Xavier Power stands in with runners on second and third. One away here in the third inning. Power 0 for 1 after he struck out looking to end the first. If you weren't watching the the our team versus the there's a low strike against Newfoundland. Um the my the starting pitcher, Ethan O'Coin, went uh five innings and he had a lot of strikeouts and I think he was at 63 pitches there's a strike there's one that looked right down the plate from here but batter doesn't like it so he threw three or four innings and he threw in the mid 60s late late 50s so that's good and that was the last time we ever get to use him in this tournament That one fouled back right towards the food truck. Hope he doesn't hurt the food. Or a, pe or a person. Or a person, yes. I gotta say, the, the food truck that we had here today, the, the purple, pedo purple people feeder, I had a chance to have a burger and some onion rings from there, and it was good. It was really good. There's a ball that it's ripped foul. Oh, it's defense. Just a couple of feet. In front of the washroom. Two away here, top of the third inning. Express leading at five to three. That pitch doesn't miss by much, but it does miss indeed, and so count goes to one and two. He needs one more to get out of this inning, and. And they can get back on the bats. If he can throw one more strike here, get in, and then Eastern's going to have to do some damage. S see someone holding, uh, I think it's a Newfoundland flag out there. Yeah. It's a swing and a miss. Seventh it's, it's, strikeout. Seventh strikeout for... For Hudson as he strikes uh, for the second inning in a row, gets three Ks in an inning, but unfortunately for him... Those three Ks are interspersed with a couple of hits and a couple of runs on the board. Three came in in the top of the third, so after two and a half, it is the Eastern Express leading the St. John's Capitals five to two, or five to three, excuse me, as I 
can't mark my own book properly. And do up in the bottom of the third, it's going to be Owen Williams, Owen Hiscock, and Damian Norris for the Capitals. So he's up to 52 pitches now. Is uh, this inning has been sponsored by Honey Hut. Is uh, gotta love it. Owen Williams. So Williams, this will be his pitching appearance for the weekend. He will not be available for tomorrow or the next day, so they'll probably run him all the way up to his maximum 75. Exactly. I think that's why a lot of coaches are trying to save their, if they get to the final, a lot of trying to save them for the final, obviously. But, you know, you can only use, there's only a certain amount of baseball, so you want to use your pitchers wisely. And I think that's what my coach is doing, and I think that's what uh, Eastern's doing in uh, Newfoundland, so... Yeah, when I was when I was a kid, there were no such thing as pitch count rules. And like I said, I never played at 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 a AAA level. I played. I mean, if if there were letters, which there weren't on on the class of ball I played, it probably would have been like you know, there's AAA, AA, A. I probably would have been around C or D. Like it was very low level. But we did have one very good pitcher, and you know he got way overused, and his arm. Uh, you know, it, it definitely affected his arm, and one of the best things that Baseball Canada ever did was putting in pitch count rules to protect the arms of young pitchers. Yep. And uh, you know, to see to see the way some players get over got overused when I was a kid, and and the fact that that doesn't happen anymore, no. it's so much better for the game overall. Yeah, and I think not only saving the arms, but you know. If you get your, because if you throw way too many pitches at the beginning of the season, that can, like, you might have to, you might not be able to play. Like, you might have to play first. I mean, you you gotta, um, you you need your arm, which is why, um, obviously, our league sets a limit for seventy five pitches, like you were just saying there. Um, like there weren't maxims back then, but like that's why you always want to cut. There's nothing a coach can ask for more than to keep his players safe and healthy. So uh, I think that's what every coach in this tournament is trying to do and in provincials. So. Yeah, absolutely. As Owen Williams, the pitcher for the Capitals, getting his first plate appearance of the game. And he's got a full count. As getting his third inning of work on the mound is Emmett Flynn. And that Ooh. one catches the inside. That just, that looked a little inside. I was watching the screen. I wasn't watching the, I was watching the screen, but that looked kind of, that kind of looked a little inside, but and Williams, it's called strike three. Williams certainly thought it was a strike, or thought it was a ball inside as well. Brings up Owen Hiscock. He grounded out to short his first time up, so he's 0 for 1. Three straight strikeouts now for Flynn going back to the second inning. There's another strike, and now the count 0-2. As a pitcher, you usually either feel stressed or really happy. There's a ball that's ripped in. It'll go foul as the third baseman tried to reach out with a nice effort there. As Great effort there by it. Doyle, but didn't quite get onto that ball in time. That one fouled back almost directly into our camera screen, or camera lens, I should say. I'm not sure. I haven't, I think I've watched just about, so it was us today twice, and then this game, and then another game. Yeah, no, uh, this is the third and final game on this field. There was... PEI beat New Brunswick over on the other field 2-1, to one, and then New Brunswick playing against Dartmouth now, and again, we're still waiting for the final score in that one. 
They were, last we heard they were going into extras, but haven't heard any update since. My guess is the game's over. I mean, well, Ho I see Holly is on the phone right now, so I'm hoping that that she's getting an update from the other field, and we'll get information on that shortly as Hiscock okay, earns we'll, himself a walk. We'll try to. If you're listening and you're not sure, we only get the well. It's, once we get the news, we'll tell you right away, but for right now, we don't know as I see her on the phone, so I'm not really sure if that's going somewhere, uh, if that's going from Eisenhower, but, oh, there's a ball that's just, is there, there's a ball that gets to the second baseman as he tries, he bobbles it and he tries to underhand toss it, but he, he won't get there. As it'll get past the shortstop. So now there's a runner first and second. Is Will Will Breen? Breen reached on an error and came around to score back in the first inning. One of the two runs that the Capitals had in that inning comes up here with two on and one away here in the bottom of the third. So there's a ball ripped just at our side. We're down at the left field foul line, a couple a couple meters up of the yellow perimeter. It's the pitch, launch, and foul. I'm not sure about you, but depending on how the wind's blowing, the wind's blowing I'm not, I never know whether or not it's going to stay fair or foul. Like, can you usually tell whether or not it's fair or foul? Sometimes you can sort of tell that if, you know, if the ball's already got a bit of a slice on it, as soon as it comes off the bat, you sort of get a bit of a, an indication that it's probably going to go foul. But, uh, but from this angle, sometimes you're right. It is hard to tell for sure uh, what's going to happen. Is there a ball that smoked that that's going to be fair? Right fielder has to... Get it in as he, there's a ball that'll get passed. And it'll be an RBI double. So Breen drives in the run to make it five to four. Breen advances to second on the throw. Norris gets over to third. And that brings up Henry Parsons who had an RBI ground out back in the first inning. They were down five to three, I think, at the beginning of this inning. Yeah, and it's now, now five, five to four. four. So, as we've had a few lead changes in this game, the Express went ahead two nothing in the top of the first. The Capitals tied it up in the bottom of the first. Caps got one in the second to make it three two. Is there's a bunt that? A perfect squeeze play. Brings in the run and he gets that to was, first safely. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good bunt. I don't think though that was kind of a bunt that was. They could have been in trouble. They could have been doubled up because if that ball could have been, would have been caught by the catcher, then that then they could have been doubled off and that could have been the end of the inning because I think it's one out now. There is one out. Yeah. So that could have been. And now a runners on the corner. In. There's a ball low as the catcher fakes. Throws there's now there's two ducks on the pond for Murphy. Yeah, Sam Murray singled in the first. Is there's a ball, pass ball that'll get down? Oh, is there's a ball that'll get past? Is there as the throw they'll try to give him a third, but then it'll be it'll be backed up by the shortstop. So I won't get the so there's a runner at th Pearson at third. Murray at the plate. And the Capitals retake the lead. It's now 6-5 as they've got three runs so far in this inning. Parsons at third, Murray at the plate, as you mentioned. Here's the pitch. Inside. Or Pearson, excuse me. Inside. That breeze picks up again here. 
Not sure how well the audio of it comes through, but you can definitely hear it in our headphones when the wind goes past our uh, past our mics. You get that little whoosh kind of sound in the headphones. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Chop uh, grounder. As they get it the f out at first, but a run will score, so that'll make it seven to five. Indeed, as Murray gets an RBI. 36, I kind of want a home run so I can. That brings up Luke Hudson. I think that, how many home runs have we had in this tournament? We had one just on the, our team. Just the two on your team, because there was the grand slam inside by the Nash, Parker. By Nash, and then yeah. Tyler went deep. Yep. And I don't know, I shouldn't say those are the only two, but those are the two only two that we've had at this field so far. Oh, uh, because there's isn't there a game at Lenahan Field? Uh, no, Eisenhower. Oh, All, only yeah, Lenahan. only this one and Eisenhower are the only two that we're using. Oh, Lenahan's not. No. No. Uh, there's a, he took a stri strike outside. So he takes a ball upstairs. Our coach always says like. Like it's like halfway, like it's either yes or no. There's a ground ball and it'll be caught by the first baseman. I don't think that was a scoop, but it was a line drive. It was kind of in the dirt, but. So four runs do come in. Clinton not. Oh. Clinton, not Flynn. Okay. Sorry, I was going off of what I had heard there from the introductions because we were never given a uh, scorecard ourselves. Normally, the uh, teams do supply us with a batting order as well, but they didn't uh, do so in this game. So, so Emmett Clinton, the pitcher. Four runs in the bottom of the third for the Capitals, so it's seven to five for St. John's over Eastern going into the top of the fourth and do up in the top of the fourth. It'll be Jevin Laybolt, Jackson Gardner, and Grady Jeffrey. I see a pitcher warming up, so I'm not sure, but I'm trying to, I, it says 52 on the sign and 60 something for the uh, <coughs> for the <coughs> express pitcher. <coughs> so for uh, Emmett Clinton, that's he's got a few pitches left that he can uh, use in the bottom of the fourth. And as we look at the player warming up, it is Gavin Thompson who's warming up for the Eastern Express. Sorry, just figuring out what some of these buttons do. That's uh, yeah, there we go. As mentioned, Hudson at 52 pitches, so he'll have about 20, 23 left to work with here. 60 something from. Our angle for the other, t for, or, um, for the express pitcher, uh, Emmett Clinton. Yes. Oh, right, I gotta fix that part. Now we're in the fourth inning. Oop, fourth, there we go. So a number of lead changes in this game. The express with two in the top of the first, as we mentioned. Capitals two in the bottom of the first to tie. One in the bottom of the second to take a lead. Then the Express got three in the top of the third to take the lead back. The Capitals four in the bottom of the third, so they take the lead back again. And it is now seven to five for the team from Newfoundland Labrador. And a first pitch ball misses high and inside to Laybolt here leading off the top of the fourth. Strike. And the count goes to one and one. I've noticed from these teams that you know um, he takes a ball upstairs
is that it's been kind of like a ping pong, like tennis. Like it's been back and forth. Like um, Eastern, Eastern's got a couple runs, and the Capitals got a couple runs. So it's kind of been we've been kind of watching a ping pong tennis uh, baseball game here, folks. As Laybolt takes a walk to start the bot or top of the fourth, that'll bring up Jackson Gardner. There's a high, there's a high ball. This is upstairs. Each umpire has their own strike zone size, so I can't. You can't really tell. We have we've only seen this umpire for four innings, and we saw obviously the other. There's a strike. So the other girl had kind of like a long strike zone, like outside strike zone. So different strike zones from different pitchers. So. And that's certainly a challenge sometimes for pitchers to get used to what that particular ump is going to call as a strike in that particular game. And yep. But I mean, if you play a doubleheader, um, then you don't. Then you kind of get used to the strike zone. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's been a couple calls that haven't gone. Our, our way, and there's been some calls that have gone our way. So, I think the umpires are trying to do their best. Absolutely. So we got two more innings to play. Pitch on the dirt, so they got a runner at first and second with nobody out. Back-to-back -back walks, setting up a possible rally here for the Express in the top of the fourth. Grady Jeffrey, who walked his first time up. And I think the pitcher you said was at seven strikeouts? Yes, seven strikeouts for Hudson. There's a ball that gets by the catchers here. The throw, and he will be safe sliding as he calls for time. Heads up base running by, the, by Eastern. It's runners at second and third with nobody out. It's the pitch. We're ground to the first baseman. Is he, they try to get the guy at home. He is out. And it's a double play. A double play for e for for St. John's. What a defensive effort there. That brings up Jace Myers, who struck out his first time up and now comes up with two out and a runner on third. And that play could be a big rally killer in favor of St. John's. Yeah, that was, that was um, a big two outs for, um, there's a pass ball that the runner will not go. Um, like that, those are two big, Big outs for um, uh, St. John's because they were stuck with runner at first and second with nobody out, and now they got runner at third with two outs. So they're probably going to go to the easiest one. So there's a pass ball. The pitcher running in as he is safe at the plate. The pitcher kind of running over the batter. Excuse me, the runner from third. The umpire has to watch the play. So that brings it to 7-6, the ball game here. As we've seen plenty of scoring here in this one. And Myers ahead in the count, 2-0. Oh. So two outs. Here's the first pitch to... Myers in Myers the count now two and one as he takes a strike up in the zone. Here's the pitch and oh, it fell off the catcher and went back down. Call for 50 50 tickets. If you'd like to purchase a 50 50 ticket, go to the Queen over by 
buy the first aid trailer. She'll be happy to help you. <laughs> Three and one now. The count on Myers here. He's 0 for 1 on the game after striking out back in the second inning. This isn't really important, but I noticed the catcher as he tried to block that one. So there's a high ball and, they, and there's a walk. So this third walk in the inning. So they got a runner at first with with two outs. I was just gonna say there's a ball that I, that got pitched to me that I didn't swing at and it hit the catcher like right back. And I was like, "Are you okay?" And I and I think he hurt his wrist. So looks fine now. There's a high. Is the runners going? As they got him easily. That'll end the inning. As they got t two outs for a double play. It was it was grounded to the first baseman, and then they went home and they got the runner. So so now it's uh, now Eastern's got to play D B D, and let's see what. Uh, St. John's can do on the bats here. One run, no hits, three walks, and the three outs, as you mentioned, coming up. The double play on the ground ball to the first baseman and a caught stealing. So the Express not quite able to take as much advantage of those three walks as perhaps they would like. It heads us to the bottom of the fourth inning, and the Capitals leading this one 7-6 to six and a chance to try and add some insurance. It'll be Lily Beresford leading off, followed by Nash Gorman and uh, Kaylin Gale. And if anybody gets on, then Cameron Glasgow would be batting fourth in the bottom of the fourth of this uh, offensive showcase that we've seen in this game. 13 runs so far, and yes. both teams uh, doing well with the bats. Yeah, definitely. Um and I think that you can say that a lot of coaches say, like, the team that comes out and works the hardest is the team that's going to get the W. And right now it's looking like the Caps are doing pretty well, but now they got to score some more runs. And Eastern's trying to block them from that. This has been kind of a good game. I've been, I've been having fun up here in the booth. And watching this game. As Clinton will take the mound here. He's got a few pitches left to work with. He has five pitches left, so my guess is if there's a runner, if he walks somebody on four pitches, then he's gonna then he has one more pitch, so I think they would just go right and Say 74 pitches, that's it. There's, there's, there's Bearsford, Bearsford fouls that one off. And that'll go a couple, that'll go a couple feet behind the mini trailer back there. Misses outside and the count goes to one and one. As we see <laughs> off in the capital uh, bullpen, Dylan Smith warming up. So it looks like Smith will be the one who will come in to replace uh, Hudson. Hudson with five pitches left to use in the top of the fifth. I know you should be asking me questions, but <laughs> I'm thinking, like, if they keep their pitches under a certain limit, could they pitch the next day? Like, yes. They, that worked for provincials yes. as well, that if you... If you're under, you have to, you get maximum is 25 pitches. Yeah. So. And it's the same rule here at this tournament, absolutely. For so yeah. 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 So if you only throw 25 or fewer or whatever that. Uh, it's yeah. 25. Yeah, 25 or fewer, then you don't need to have a rest day the next day. But if you throw 26 to 40, it's one day rest. And if you throw more than 40, the amount of rest that you need would take you out of pitching for the rest of this tournament anyway. Yeah. So uh, once you get to that point. As the pitcher will be taken out for Eastern, so uh, at as 70, yeah, yeah. 70, 70 pitches. So that will be the pitching appearance of the tournament. So that is a real, I think that it's a, a really good start for Eastern. You know, they got, uh, 
they got uh he, he went so how many outs are there uh nobody out here in the top of the, or bottom of the fourth so three so plus innings. three th so he goes three and a third three th three three and a third and now they got now um now they get a look at the le a lefty it was this guy. As Gavin Thompson takes over on the mound, and as you pointed out, a lefty, and I think this being the third game of the day here on this field, it's the first lefty we've actually seen. Nash was supposed to pitch. Nash was supposed to pitch. So he was supposed to pitch, and he's the lefty. But he didn't end up having... Oh, I'll make that comment after I get my sweater back on. The wind is just a little too chilly. But of course, Nash never did end up having to pitch because you got the complete game out of uh, out of Ethan O'Coin. Yeah, he he was he was unbelievable. You know, I was really impressed, um, and I know our pitching coach Mark Haverstock, which is Nash's nice dad, has got to be pretty impressed, especially the start from Lucas Van Polgies. He was amazing. Van Polgeest had a great game, and then O'Coin had a great game. So you, your bullpen is set up very nicely for tomorrow in that you hardly had to use any, but you used the two pitchers to their maximum today, and then one other pitcher who came in and pitched uh, very little, and that was... Carter C yeah, Curtin. Yeah, Car Carter Curtin. Number 32, and, yeah. yeah. So here comes Nash Gorman with a runner on first and nobody out and a brand new pitcher to look at as we get to see what Gavin Thompson, the lefty, brings. So it's going to be the guy we called up from uh, called up from uh, A. He's going to start tomorrow, and then my guess would be someone else would come in, and then I would probably... Sh There's a ball that he'll get down the throw! And out the runner, they will throw out. Lily Bears Lily. for caught stealing. I've noticed that. I think they've Eastern Eastern's been a little more better on the base paths than um, the Capitals. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. I think that's an accurate assessment. Both teams being pretty aggressive, but. Uh, as that one misses high and inside, the count on Gorman now, I believe, two and one. One away now with nobody on rather than one on and nobody out. I think as a pitcher, baseball is just that game that that if you're playing, if you're pitching, you're doing you're doing some of the work, but you also got to let there's the ball fouled back that you got to let. You gotta trust that your infield and outfield will do some of the work. From uh, will do the work for you. Absolutely. And I think as a pitcher, you're just trying to you're trying to throw strikes for them, and you're doing that for them. And then do as there's a strike three. As the third base coach, not very happy <laughs> with the calls. He was yelling at the umpire there. Gorman, a few words to say. Gorman strikes out for the second out of the inning, and that'll bring up Kaling Gale. Gale struck out his first time up back in the second. So two up, two down, but a bit of a different way to get there as Lily Beresford did make it on base. But then got caught stealing and then at got caught stealing. second. And that's followed up by the strikeout. So now nobody on, two away. There's Gale a good pitch right there. through that one. And the count goes to the one Gales. and one. Two our alleys. There's a swing. Er. One, the one-two pitch he swung and missed. So now Eastern's gonna try to see if they can capitalize and get and get a couple more runs to lead the Capitals. And the Capitals are gonna try to do their best defense. And a very much needed quick inning on the field defensively for the Express, so that they can get right back out there. Oop. If I try to change the right one, there we go. Fifth, there we go. As we do see that Hudson 
Hudson is back out there to start this inning, but he's only got the five pitches to work with. So I would have, if I was the pitching, sorry. No, you go ahead. I would have, if I was the pitching coach, I would probably take him out. Because only why is because um, if you're at 70 pitches and you only have five more pitches to go for the maximum, there's a good chance that you can't strike out a batter and then strike them out again. Right. Unless you got like three foul balls, but three balls hit to the infield, um, then I I would I would take him out. But he's doing really well. I think he's at seven strikeouts right now. Yeah. Seven or eight. So I think it's seven. Seven. Yeah. So. And it is the top of the order for the Express. So I think. Dangerous. Yeah. The idea is, you know. Use him for as many outs as you can get, and if you can get one more or even somehow two more outs out of five pitches, if pitch to contact and hope for your defense to work well behind you, yep. then that's why the one, not? That's the one thing as a pitcher, you got to trust your infield and outfield that they'll do the right work and the coaches will tell them the right things. And So we got Dylan Smith coming up to bat. He's one for two with a single and a run scored. That run and that hit coming in the third inning. There's a ball and it'll get past as the pitcher misses it and the sh second baseman as the shortstop will have to get behind second there. So there's a runner at first with no outs. Brings up Max Keo. <coughs> Keo walked in the first and then singled and came around to score in the third. She is one for one. There's a ball that's ripped as the, it'll get by, is there's a ball, it'll get past the, the left field. There is there's a ball and it'll roll. And the third baseman will have to cut it off as, as now they have a runner at second base with no outs as e Eastern has tied it up at seven. A big RBI double for Max Keough. And now and they got a bear. Now Newfoundland's got a bear down as there's a first pitch strike to the number two hitter. That brings up Brennan Doyle. Doyle singled and scored in the first, struck out in the third, so one for two. That one gets by the catcher. And Keo able to get over to third base, so a rough start to this top of the fifth inning for Hudson. It says he's at 74, so this will probably be his last, yep, that'll be his last pitch. As it's not, it's looking like it's not ending well. And a single into right field. Scores another run for the Express. I don't see a coach going out there, but he's at 75 pitches. Oh, yep, oh, here we go. I was looking, sorry, I was looking at the wrong dugout. Whoops. Each went red, so it's, uh, as Hudson will go out, as here's my walk up song. And here comes Will Breen to take over on the mound. It sounds like. Uh, Mariana Rivera coming up to the pitcher's mound. <laughs> so Hudson ends up with the one thing about being an outfielder, I play infield and outfield, is that is that in the infield if you miss it you know that your outfielders can come in and get it, but if you're in the outfield and it gets by you, only thing is there is behind you is the fence, and exactly. it's going to bounce right back out mm -hmm. at you. So I think you should try to keep it in front of you in the infield, but I think it's more um, important to keep it in front of you in, in, the, in the outfield much more than it is in the infield. As we take a look at the final line on Hudson, he pitched five, four plus innings. Four innings with 75 pitches for his max as he leaves a runner at first with a little drooper that went into right field. 
And seven strikeouts for Hudson on the mound. That's certainly a very good afternoon of work for him. As we see Will Breen finishing his warm-up tosses. And we'll also get a get Hudson, who had been pitching, coming back out to play third base. And Brennan Doyle goes uh, back to the uh, back to the dugout. You would think that would be a little bit different. Like, ah, why put him at third? But you, why can't you sit him? Because Brennan Doyle, who was playing third base, is immediately going to warm up. So there was he near the shortstop. Uh, perhaps he had been playing short. Doyle. I feel like he might he might, he might have been playing short. I'm not. I think you know a little bit more or about no, this I'm looking, guy. I'm looking at the wrong set of names. That's my problem. Nash Gorman had been playing third. He comes out for Hudson to go and and play. Uh, no, I'm looking at. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> uh. The thing is, we're in the top of the fifth, right? Yes, we are in the top of the fifth. That. So the express up eight seven. Um. This. Oh, there's a oh, ball that's oh. right off his I, foot. There's a ball off his foot. I thought that was off the pitcher's mat. His ears left throw to third. Home is as uh, he's safe at the plate and safe at second. So there's a run at second. As the coach trying to go out there, so the pitcher doesn't. That looks like it hurt. A line <laughs> shot right off the top of his foot. That's. That's got to hurt. I mean, that was at least, I would have to say, at least 50, 60, 60 something miles, 65 miles an hour off the bat. I mean, that ball was crushed. And the run does come in to score. score. He Brennan looks fine. Dorn. So he's going to walk it off. You can see there's a little bit of, little bit of tenderness there. In I think he's just caught. I think he just wants to. You know, as a pitcher, you can't really be nervous to ask the umpire for time if you need it. I, and I mean, it looks like he's fine, though. It looks like he's... Uh, he's going to try a couple of pitches. A couple of practice pitches. See. I'm watching that foot, and it doesn't look like there's much attention on it. As, as it, looks is, like he's, it is his push-off foot, too. It's so. Yeah, that's the most important one, though, because all your... All, he's, since he's a righty like me, he the only thing he has to do with his left foot is just pick it up and put it on the ground. But if you're in the stretch, you got to push off that other foot. So I'm watching his foot really carefully. So the coach is out again. Yeah, and they're going to they're gonna make a switch here. They're going to get Breen uh, off the mound, which I think that's the right thing that's, to do. Yes, that's definitely. And I think as a coach, you got to just be – I'm not a coach, but um, if you see – a player like just holding even something that yeah. could be so unfortunately for Breen he pitches to one batter and uh, we're going to see another pitching change and it is uh, going to be uh, but where am I here uh, it's uh, the guy with the Bo Bichette Gorman. Nash Gorman who's coming in to pitch the guy with the Bo Bichette here there you go. Also known as Nash Gorman. <laughs> so uh, Gorman, and Gorman will get now as much time as he needs to warm up because this is a pitcher change due to injury. So if he needs a little bit of extra time to, uh, to complete his warm up, he had started to warm up down in the bullpen anyway. Yeah, I was watching that. I wasn't well. I wasn't watching it, but I saw a, a couple of glimpses of it. He looked pretty good. Now he's pitching out on the mound, so really good. So Breen again pitches to one batter, and unfortunately takes a line drive right off the top of his uh, right foot. Pitcher did. Oh, I see the medic in the in the dugout. Yeah. We had a bloody nose at the beginning of our game. 
Carter Curtin got, got a bloody nose. He took a foul a ball during warm up. Well, during our infield outfield, as he took one up to the nose and he got his nosebleed. And I see the medic in there, and he looks fine. I don't see any tears, but um, he looks looks like he's in a not not much pain, but. Um, I think he looks fine. Like I said, CK got a bloody nose in the game when we were playing against Newfoundland. That one misses outside, and the count goes to 2-0 and oh on Nate McKenzie, who's 2-2 two for two with a pair of RBI in this game. And the Express now leading it nine to seven. That one misses down in the dirt. This game started around three fifty. It's now five twenty six. Yeah. There's a s inside strike. Some of the strikes here, like you have to like go down. You have to put your bat really inside your body, which. As a batter, that's what you don't want. Is there's a pitch outside and it's ball four. So that puts runners at first and second with still nobody out here in the top of the fifth inning and Nate McLean will come in to hit. And McLean reached on an error in the first and walked in the third. So he takes a ball inside as the runners will move up. You have to be really careful at this backstop. If you guys are just listening from home, you can't really see it, but it's about, from from the home plate we're using for a mosquito, it's about, there's a ball outside, is about, I would say about a meter and a quarter away from the backstop. We played in Bridgewater and it was a mile back. So there's a ball ripped. And to the second base, and AC doesn't know where to go with it. As I don't think that'll be an error since he. So the umpire asked for time just to wipe down the plate. Number 19, Xavier Power. So here's Xavier Power. A run, another run does come in to score. So it is now, now. 10 to 7. And that's the fourth run of this inning. And because it's the, we're into the fifth inning, there's no five-run rule in this inning. Oh, there's a ball that has, it'll throw down to the third. As the catcher tried to fake throw out to second because the runner was moving. As, as now that he, they have two runners in scoring position as he takes this, a ball outside. Xavier Power with the 1-1 count. He's 0 for 2 on the day, a pair of strikeouts. We're in the top. So top of the fifth inning, if you just joined us, top of the fifth inning, it is Express 10, Capital 7. And the top of the fifth inning is he takes the ball inside. As we are here at the... 2021 11U AAA Baseball Atlantic Championships coming to you live from Lapierre Field. In Hammonds Plains, Nova Scotia. And another walk. So that'll the lower bases. the bases for Emmett Clinton coming up. Clinton 0 for 1. He reached on a hit by pitch in the second inning, struck out in the third. Clinton also was the starting pitcher for the Express. And he was the one who threw 70, 70, 70 pitches, yeah. I think. There, he swings at a pitch. That looked over his head, is he? It's, so it's a swing and a miss. It's an O into one. As the infield is playing in, the second baseman... If you're listening, you can't see it, but the second baseman is playing a couple feet behind the pitcher. And the third baseman, the shortstop. Everybody playing in to try and cut down a run at home plate on a ground.
grounder into the infield. That also leads to trouble for a pop fly. Is there's one that, that one will just misses foul? Just fouls. We got. I get a pretty good view from here, and that looked like. It, it, it could have been fair, but it landed, goes foul. Landed just in foul territory. Obviously, we can't. We don't make the decisions, so Umpire says it's foul. It's foul. There's a ball, a pass ball. No runners going. So there's like I think no outs. Uh, still nobody out. Yes, I you're think right. they don't want. I, I, I just think they don't want to waste their outs. Yeah, still that nobody out sense. here in the top of the fifth inning. Four runs already in. Obviously, Bases there's no, loaded. There's no five run rule, so. Excuse me. As he swings one over his head again. As he is showing some frustration in the dug who slams his bat. As he seems hot right now. Jevin Laybolt comes up. He's 0 for 1. Struck out in the second. Walked in the fourth. And then was... There's a ball that's ripped as the shortstop goes home as the catcher drops it. And I was talking about this in the Provincial Championship. I tagged the guy, but then the ball bounced out of the glove. And I think the umpires just see if the ball bounces out, then they automatically think he's safe. But if yeah. you get the tag down... Then if if the ball comes out of your glove, even if you tag him, if the ball comes out of your glove in the act of tagging him, then the runner is safe. Uh, yeah. So there's that was kind of a close call. I wasn't sure. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. But the catcher's really worried about that guy at third. St scoring. As the bases are still loaded with one away here. They got to make a play f for the pitcher. He's throwing strikes. Uh, and and they got to throw the guy. So the outfield, from our point of view, that kind of looks like he's th they're playing. They're, they just moved. The field just moved in a little bit. I think they're trying to play a two on him just in case because they could gun the guy at second or at home. Jackson Gardner at the plate here. He's walked and scored as well as striking out once. Here, four runs away from tying as there's a high ball to Jackson Gardner. Jackson Express Gardner. Express continuing to bat here in the top of the fifth inning, trying to extend this lead that they've developed. Jackson Gardner, so on deck is... Grady Jeffrey. I know you probably can't read my writing there because it's a mess, but... Here on deck. They got to get some outs. Just one away here in the top of the fifth inning. Eastern scoring a lot of runs. The infield still playing in. A swing and a miss. He has a couple. He, so they got two down now. And Grady Jeffrey coming to, black, to bat. He walked in the second. Grounded into a double play in the fourth. So 0 for 1. Take slow, ball 1. Watching a live baseball game might be the funnest to watch. You know, there's always something happening. I've never been to an MLB game, but um, I, kn I know that, that it's pretty fun to watch. I got a chance to go to a game. Uh, I was about your age, so that's more than a few years ago. <laughs> there's a ball that is ripped, and it gets passed. It gets passed, and the runner, one, one runner, two runners in. Third is run, and he touches the plate, and it is, and it is now 14 to seven. A three-run double clears the bases for Grady Jeffrey. That wasn't a very good play in left field. She could have made the catch, and then that guy could have tagged, but obviously since there's two outs, they got to do contact. So they got, they got three runs on that ball that, get pa that got passed. 
uh, past the, the, the left fielder. And it is now 14 to seven. Seven runs in in this inning. Eight runs in in this inning. And I gotta use the washer. Yeah, as soon as you're ready, come on back. <laughs> oh. Okay. And that's going to do it for the top of the fifth. But eight runs on the board in the top of the fifth inning. Turns what was a 7-6 lead for the St. John's Capitals into a 14 to seven lead for the Eastern Express. And now the Caps need to try and rebound in the bottom of the fifth and it'll be Cameron Glasgow, Owen Williams and Owen Hiscock do up for the Caps. The top of the fifth has scored eight runs on four hits and one error, one runner left on base. Eight runs on four hits and one error, one runner left on base. Fourteen to seven now the the uh, score line, which obviously a lot of scoring in this game, and we'll head to the bottom of the fifth, where as mentioned, it's Glasgow. Williams and Hiscock do up against the pitcher for the Eastern Express, uh, Gavin Thompson. And that big eight spot. Oh, yeah, I'll turn that back up for you. There you go. So. I hear that song in the background. It's tragically hip. As we get ready for bottom five. Oh, you need a little more. There we go. Number 26, Cameron Glasgow. Cameron, Cameron Glasgow. Glasgow. Yep. Yeah. 0 for 1 on the day. He struck out back in the second. So the so they got the lead is now cut into half. It is 14 to 7 for the Express. And Glasgow fouls off the first pitch. The count goes to 0-1. Fouls off another one. And it's 0-2. When you're behind that back stuff, you gotta be watching for balls. I mean, one could shoot in the head. Yeah. <laughs> and Glasgow well, a gets a hold that's of that one. And a cop. Oh, and it's dropped! by the right fielder as they got their first runner aboard in the inning. So that's gonna bring up Owen Williams. He. Sorry, sorry it's just hard to read. Yeah, Owen Williams up to bat now with Cameron Glasgow standing at first base. He takes a strike. A lot of these, I've noticed from well, just that pitch right there, that a lot of the first pitches have been strikes. They have been throwing, all, yeah. All of the pitchers we've had today have been throwing a lot of first pitch strikes. Yep. And we've seen that through pretty much all of the games today as well. Yeah, like especially for uh, for Team Newfoundland, is there's a ball, a strike that's called that the team would have to go for, but it's called a strike. One and two, the count now. Is there's a strike three? Gets called looking on three straight strikes. As the third, I don't want to say this very loud because he's not too far away, but their base coach didn't seem very happy with that. <laughs> That'll bring up Owen Hiscock. He grounded out to short in the first, singled and came around to score in the third. Takes that one inside. And 
count one to no here with one on one out. Bottom of inning number five here, 14 to seven in favor of the Eastern Express over the St. John's Capitals. This is almost three hours. Getting up there, yeah. <coughs> Bless you. Thanks. There's a pass ball. A runner from first will get to second standing up with no throw. As there's that runner in scoring position. And the thing about a seven run deficit if you're St. John's you get you got to try and get it back just one run at a time. You don't focus on trying to get seven in one swing. So, sure as there's a walk, as they got runner at first and second with with one out. Damian Norris now up to bat. He is one for two, singled and scored in the second. Reached on an or er, singled and scored in the first. Excuse me. Reached on an error and scored in the third. Because the coach for uh, Eastern just had, wanted to have a little chat with the pitcher for a sec, just to give him a little breather. As the third baseman coming really hard. I think he's worried of him bunting. I don't know the signs, obviously, for that team, but... One misses high. The count goes to one and zero on Damian Norris. Here's the pitch. There's a ball just missed. So the catcher is trying to frame it there, but they didn't get the call. Two and zero now. The count. That one misses low, and it's now three and zero. It's a good way for the catcher. Good play for the catcher to keep it in front of him. As there's a strike on the outside corner. It looked like he wanted to call the strike, and the ball wasn't even in the catcher's glove yet. So three and one now. The count on Norris. It's three one, knocked up behind, and that'll go into the woods. Someone's going to have to get that as Nate from our team is going to get it. So 3-2 the count. One away here. Bottom of five. Oh, he plunks him. That one. He'll load the bases, but boy, did that hit him flush. Right on the shoulder, and he's in some pain right now. He's trying to walk around. So the, with the bases, there's the bringing in new pitchers. As taking over at pitcher is going to be Dylan Smith for the Eastern Express. And we're going to see another defensive change as well as Gavin Thompson, who had been pitching, will move to first base. And the player who had been playing first base, which I believe was... Max Keough, or sorry, uh, was Brennan Doyle. Doyle will go to shortstop. So a three-person switch. Doyle had been playing first, goes to shortstop. Uh, Smith, who had been playing short, goes to the pitcher's mound. And Thompson, who had been pitching, goes to first base as could see for the guy at first who got hit he's shown the the first base coach where he got hit so that looked like it if you're watching on a screen then you can see right here you can see the runner first was just getting checked he looks fine now probably will have a bit of a bruise in the morning though um, yeah, that didn't look like, that did look like it hurt. Bases loaded, one away here as we have the new pitcher for the Express, and again, that is Dylan Smith. So Smith coming in in a bit of a jam here. He's going to try and have to work his way out of it, 
for his team, and it's Will Breen who I just saw the coach giving the sign, so I don't think he's getting in the bunt with the bases loaded. Took the uh, Breen, who was pitching in the top of the fifth, when he took that pitch off the top of his foot. And it's that right foot, which when you're batting right-handed, or he bats left-handed, he pitches right-handed, but bats left-handed. It's the foot that he has to step up, step forward with. So... Not the not the drive foot, so that may be a bit of a benefit. Batting left-handed, it won't be his drive foot, but it's still pitch. probably the ball that gets the catcher keeps it in front of you, keeps it in front of him. And but Breen is one for two. He reached on an error in the first and scored, singled and scored in the third. He also drove in a run and takes a walk there and That'll walks walk. in another run. As the catcher's going out to have a little conversation with the, or as he just gives the ball back. That brings it up Henry Pearson. Pearson grounded out, but got an RBI in the first inning and then singled and came around to score in the third. Third baseman going out to talk to the pitcher to keep him positive. They are up now four to eight, so the lead is not cut in the avenue. So there is a first pitch ball to Pearson. Henry Pearson up at the plate right now. Pearson? Yep. Sam Murray on deck. Murphy. So Murray, excuse me. yeah. No, you're right, Murray. Again, trying to read my writing is uh, difficult enough at the best of times, I'm sure. <laughs> the camera's kind of getting a little cold. Yeah, that. <coughs> so Smith gets himself set and delivers. The pitch. That one misses that one a little won't. bit low. As a pitcher, I think you just need to take the stress off you and just focus on having fun, and then you'll get some strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Good philosophy to have. Yep. Pearson just gets a piece of that ball and fouls it back into the screen. If he hits the camera, does that, is that gonna? No, because the, the, the camera is just far enough behind the screen that it oh, should be okay. <laughs> Here's a oh. ball that's ripped down the right field line. One run is in. As there'll be runners on the corners now and it is now eight. Now, excuse me, 11. No, 14 to 10 is where we're at now. 14 to 10. The tying run is on deck. Number 35, Sam Murray. So a two-run single for Henry Pearson. Will Breen gets all the way around to third. Damian Norris and Owen Hiscock come in to score on that play. So the pitch to high chopper. They go second for one. First for two is he'll be safe. They only get one, but he'll be in there with a sack. And the other run does come in to score, so a, a uh, fielder's choice RBI for Sam Murray. Fielder's choice, that was the word I was looking for. There we go, and it is now 14 yeah, to 11. There's a swing and a miss. And on an outside pitch, so it is 0-1. So, in the Eastern bullpen, they have... Uh, that is uh, Jevin Laybolt warming up in the Eastern I th bullpen. I think we're in the bottom of the fifth, right? Yes, we are in the bottom so of the fifth. So, I think he's going in for the save situation. Just if... It As no, Luke, right. Luke Hudson... Batting here. As he fouls tips on just to stay alive. As he got a little piece of that ball. So this back and forth game continues to seesaw. The Is there's a ball that's right, a line drive. And, and it's caught at second base. It is. No throwouts. 
And that will do it for the bottom of the fifth inning, but the Capitals do get another four to pull back to within three. The Express still lead it, but it is now 14 to 11 heading into the sixth inning. Do up in the top of the sixth, it is the top of the order, Dylan Smith, Max Keough, and Brennan Doyle for the Eastern Express. I think all Eastern wants right now is, is just to get a couple more runs in and don't let and don't let um, the Capitals get get and just hold them there. Like get a couple of runs and then you'll get, and then they'll go out and then shut them down and then on the other side they'll try to get the Capitals will try to get some good D and hopefully get the bats going. I think the last batter for Team St. John's was um, Luke Hudson. Luke Hudson, so it's going to be the 7, 8, 9 hitter. Lily Bearsford, Nash Gorman, and Kalen Gale do up for St. John's in the bottom of the 6th. But right now we're focused on the top of the sixth inning. So, see a lot of ice cream in people's hands. Make me, make me. I'm getting hungry up here. <laughs> this is a this is hungry work for sure. Yeah. That's one thing you have to get used to when you're doing broadcasting is you eat when the game's not happening. You don't yeah. get to choose when you get to eat. Let's catch those balls out. You can take a drink of water just about whenever, but you don't really get to eat until the game's over. <laughs> and when you're doing two and three and sometimes four games in a day, you grab that food when you can, whether it's really mealtime or not. but it is a lot of fun being up here in Chase. It has been a lot of fun having you up here with me this afternoon for this game. I really appreciate you coming in. You've done a great job. I will say this. You have done a great job up here Thanks, in the broadcast. Thanks, I love being up here. Well, hopefully I can be up here and be in the Sportsnet studios one day. Here's the pitch. There's a ball popped up. Second baseman calling for it as he has to drift back. Makes kind of a lucky catch. On that play, he was running back and he was kind of doing a um, back pedal. But your first step should be back. But he does a couple back pedals and it's kind of a grab. As there's a ball left to the shortstop. Gets it on the first ball and makes the play. What a play by the, sec by the shortstop. And they got two pitches, two pitches, two outs. Big defensive efforts. First, Glasgow with that fly ball that uh, he made the big play on. And then Hiscock at short makes a big play as well. And so two very quick outs, and that's exactly what the Capitals need. A very quick inning, get back on the bats, try and keep the momentum going that they had from the bottom of the fifth and see if they can score a couple more runs to tie it up. Yeah, and if they can get fifth, five runs, they should be tr at least trying to get start off with three because you're, the goal for them should, right now, right at the second and the, in the top of the six, 14, when they're down 14-11, is there's a ball that will go upstairs, so it's ball four. Um, you're just trying to score some runs. Yeah, Brennan Doyle will walk, so Big and chance for, hitter, a I chance think. for an insurance run gets to first base with two away. That brings up Gavin Thompson. He's he rips ball a ball. Times. Sorry, rips <laughs> the ball in, in the left field. So they got runner sec first. Excuse me, first and second. Excuse me, with two outs. And that'll Nate bring up Nate McKenzie. He's reached base all three times, walking twice. And there's a ball ripped. That's fair. 
is, is this all it is? What a throw! What a throw! And they get him! What a throw from from the left fielder. Are you kidding me? What a throw. And that is a huge momentum boost. Is it ever? For St. John. So they're going to be batting in the bottom of the seventh inning, trailing by only three. The deficit could have been bigger if not for the huge throw from left field all the way in to catch Brennan Doyle trying to score. We head to the bottom of the sixth. It's going to be up to Lily Beresford, Nash Gorman, and Kaylin Gale to try to get this rally started. They trail by three, three to tie and force extras, four to earn a victory for the St. John's Capitals. <laughs> As there we see Chase's hand head out in front of the camera there. There you get to see the, the face of uh, the guy who's been calling this game for you, Chase. Again, you've been doing a great job. Thanks. It's fun being up here. So back out there for another inning of work is Dylan Smith. He's going to try to shut things down here and shut the door. See a lot of ice cream out here. Some ice cream fans. Some ice cream, little ice cream fans out here. I might have to stop and get some before heading, heading out this evening. You have to carry all this. I haven't seen what Eisenhower looked like. No, I unfortunately haven't, uh, haven't had a chance to check out that field either. Lily Bairdsford comes up, and she reached on a uh, walk back in the fourth and was then caught stealing. She also grounded out to second back in the second. Wasn't she the one who, who made the, no, she wasn't the one who made the throw, I thought no. it was. So Lily Beresford batting here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Capitals need three to tie. So she knocks a foul. Just in front of home plate. Smith gets set and delivers. The pitch, strike. Low strike zone. And the count goes to one and two on Beresford. Grounded oh, to short. What a Across skin in skin. time. As they got one down, two to go. We haven't talked much about the standings. What's this? What? I don't really know much about this. So what's going to happen if um, they get two more outs? So the capital. Oh, they're they're out. So the express would go to two and zero. Oh. Uh, depending on what happens in uh, in the other game, or what happened in that other game between, between Dartmouth, Dartmouth and, and New Brunswick. Brunswick, if Dartmouth ends up ended up winning that game, Dartmouth would also be at two and zero. Oh. You guys would be one and one, and there would be the two other teams at zero oh and two, and that would be New Brunswick and Newfoundland. But if Newfoundland can come back and win this one, then we'd have, depending again on what happened in that other game. We'd either have uh, one team at 2-0, and o, three teams at 1-1, one and, one, and one team at 0-2, oh or we might have all five teams at 1-1 one one if, if Newfoundland comes back and wins this game and if New Brunswick uh, had come back, had won that game in extra innings against Dartmouth. So there's so a lot of questions about what happened in that game right now as the standings could look uh, any sort of strange way over the... Uh, course of the next I I would say about an hour Nash Gorman takes a pitch outside last la, and I just heard the co one of the coaches for Eastern just saying last batter so yeah um, they will have number seven coming out is there's a ball ripped down the left field line in foul.
So Nash Gorman at the plate with one away. Nobody on. And right now the tying run still sitting in the dugout. They need to get two on to bring the tying run to the plate. Oh, yeah, that's true. That one misses high, and there's one runner on as what? Gorman gets the walk. So that'll bring up Kalen Gale. I'm not, I'm not cheering for anybody. I'm just hoping to see a good ball game here. Is they're doing a pitching. So they're doing a pitching change as he will go off with 39 pi total pitches. And Nate McKenzie will come in and take over on the mound. So He's, McKenzie. So those are on at first with one out. Runner at first, one away. So the game tying run is in the on deck circle, which means this is an official save situation. So if he, what do you mean like, you said the tying run. The tie, the tying run is in, would be in the on deck circle when the at bat starts. Oh, I was kind of confused because I was like, um, oh, I get it, because I thought I wasn't sure who was. Yeah. So. I thought you kind of like, sorry. That was yeah. My bad. Yeah. No. No worries. Yeah. Meanwhile, Alan Jackson and uh, I should actually because we're going to post this to YouTube later. I shouldn't actually be saying what songs there are. We are not trying to monetize off of any of the music. I should say that. We are not trying to monetize off of any of the music. But the fact is, this is the Alan Jackson song that references my favorite artist of all time, Mr. Jimmy Buffett, which, you know, if anybody looks at the clothes that I wear and the hats that I wear, nobody should be really surprised that I'm a Jimmy Buffett fan. I know you're not old enough to really get Jimmy Buffett, Chase, but that's okay. Okay. The important thing is the line, what would Jimmy Buffett do? Coming up here. And <laughs> Same with Elvis Presley. There you go, yeah. Well, Jimmy's not quite as old as Elvis. Thank you there's, very much. There's, there's El you know, Jimmy's not quite as old and not quite as well known as Elvis. It goes, you know, Elvis is back here in the time frame, and then you move forward a few years, and then there's Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett. Then you move forward a few more years. Then you move forward a few more years. Then you move forward a few more years, and then you're into the present. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was my uncle who introduced me to Jimmy Buffett when I was about your age as well. And so here we go. Kaylin Gale. Sorry, we, we had to... We get a little sidetracked when the music goes. That's okay. Uh, there's a strike that touched the ground. So they got one out. Runner at, runner at first. Nash is at first. Nash Gorman at first base. Kale and Gale standing at the plate. Takes that one high and inside. The count goes to one and one. Bottom of the sixth inning. Express 14, Capitals 11. Chance for PEI's representative at this tournament to go to 2-0 and if they can hold on. There's a strike, it's 0-2. It's this is only his third, fourth pitch. Yeah, yeah, mm, first batter he's ahead. facing. He's in swing a swing and a miss. And a miss. As Gale strikes out. So, the, so one more out here and the game is over. Number 26. And the last chance for the Capitals in the hands of Cameron Glasgow. Glasgow reached on an error and came around to score in the fifth inning. He struck out back in the second. Your swing and a miss on the on the heater. I, I got to say, that pitcher is on the mound right now. Nate you McKenzie, know, yeah. Nate, he is throwing heat right now. Is he swinging wow. this and a runner going and he is out. And that is going to be the ball, the ball game. game. That's your ball game, folks. Eastern will win it 14 11, the final score. That's going to do it for us here this afternoon. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. And drive home safely. <laughs> And I got to say, Chase, you have done a great job. Chase Leslie, the future of sports broadcasting right here in the booth with me. 
But Chase, I do have to do my regular sign off. Oh, before we do that, we got to get to the players of the game. So we got to make sure we do that part first. And so first we'll get the uh, presentation of the players of the game. Luke Hudson, who pitched a whale of an effort there for the Caps, is the player of the game for St. John's. Nate McKenzie, who came in and got the save, as well as having a pretty good day at the plate. A couple of RBIs, a couple of big hits, and that is going to do it for this one. The Eastern Express of Prince Edward Island defeat the St. John's Caps of Newfoundland Labrador 14 to 11. Chase, again, a great job. Mr. Chase Leslie does a fantastic job up here in the booth. Thank you. But I do have to do my sign off. I'm kind of particular about this. So until tomorrow morning when we come back to you for day two of the 2021 11 U AAA Baseball Championships on behalf of Chase Leslie. This is Michael Patter saying, may your pitches hit the corners and may your liners hit the fence. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.